Hey everybody, this is Dave from Verified News, FreedomWatch.us channel. And um, today, I'd like to talk about the future direction of the channel. Now, as you, many of you know, my channel finally got monetized, and it's like one of the very few channels dealing with the subject matter that I deal with that's gotten monetized. Um, the problem is, is that there's not much I can do on the subject of sovereignty and banking right now that wouldn't be redundant. I plan to do some correction videos and possibly uh, reissue the Federal Reserve Explained series to correct the errors that I now know exist within that series. I didn't know then because, face it, not hardly any of when I started doing that Federal Reserve series. What was it, three years ago? God, it's been that long. You know, a lot of us didn't know what a lot of us know now. You know, and uh, so the problem I'm having right now is that my channels name is verified news and up to this point there's nothing that's been put on the channel that can't be verified and mentally conceptually treaty wise and historically I'm coming to what I guess uh, I would call Dave's unified monetary theory now I have a theory that I'm researching right now and everything I found is confirming it nothing's nothing's like undermining it at all and you know I come to these things with an open mind I I get an idea and I go well let's see if this idea is full of shit you know and that's my own idea and that's how I approach it you know let's see how easy this one is to knock down the idea The idea that has come to me, which is now turned into a theory, is is based on it's like a gestalt of everything I've done on the banking system, law, this, that, and the other thing, you know. And the one big question that keeps coming up, and the one reason that I can't actually <sighs> explain the process of like an acceptance or or writing a, a, a bond and sending it in for insurance is the one stumbling block I'm having on understanding all of that is what's the source of the credit now no matter what you answer for that you're dealing with a fiction in a way because right now you're pledging future income in other words each dollar that's produced is produced by the pledge of future income future payments something that's going to happen in the future and since the future isn't here yet it's a fiction in other words you can't rely on the future you can't predict the future you don't know what's going to happen in the future you know so how can you create credit on it? It's not quantifiable. How can you create infinite credit and the system allows for the creation of infinite credit? Make no mistake about it. Uh, if you have infinite credit, it can't be based on anything finite. You see what I'm saying? I mean, the only limit to credit creation right now is, like for the United States, is the debt ceiling. And that's an imposed debt ceiling, a self-imposed debt ceiling. In other words, it isn't really a, a physical debt ceiling. The debt could go a lot higher than that. Okay, so having a limit on debt through statute does not change the fact that the debt the credit is unlimited 
So that leaves me with the question is, where do you find unlimited credit? Where do you find unlimited substance? You can't go to the future for it because the future doesn't exist and you can't be sure it's substance, it's a fiction. You can't... <laughs> you see what I mean? Anything you use is a fiction. Credit can't be a fiction. Now, let's talk about Mary Croft a little bit, and this might help you understand a little bit of it. Now, I've listened to Mary Croft's Red Ice interview and read quite a bit of her book. Um, and there's a lot of it that I don't get because of the one thing that I don't get, which is, where's the credit come from? In other words, I understand everything Mary Croft is saying, but none of it made sense to me because where's the credit come from? Okay, so Mary Croft says it's our credit. And this is a key to understanding Mary, Cro Mary Croft's work. She didn't say debt. She didn't say debit. It's our credit. Credit is not a debit. Credit isn't a liability. Credit is an asset. A credit adds to an account. You see what I'm saying? So when Mary Croft says it's your credit, what she's saying is you're the one that's making the addition to the account. You're giving the bank your credit, and then they pretend it's theirs and sell it to you. Does that make sense? Uh, I'll, uh, I didn't want to get right into the banks with this video because this video is about something different. It's about the credit. Well, anyway, so credit is an asset. Credit is an addition. Credit, credit isn't debt. So when you give your credit to someone, you're giving them an asset. But where did it come from? Where did your credit come from? Why is your credit so good? What is that credit? Where does it come from? What's the source? Not your future labor because you can't have infinite credit on a finite thing. You understand what I'm saying? There's only one thing that's infinite. Only one thing. Now, whether you're an atheist, an agnostic, or a Christian, or a Muslim, or you, whatever, whatever you believe about whether or not God is real, or whether or not the Bible is real, whether all of that, it doesn't matter because if you don't believe it, a system is still in place that works on those principles, on the Christian principles. Now I'm going to talk about the Holy Roman Empire. And I want to talk about the Vatican, and I'm going to talk about Unum Sanctum. That's U-N-A-M-S-A-N-C-T-U-M. Unum Sanctum. The basic principles brought out in Unum Sanctum are the ones that I've been able to interpret so far, because to tell you the truth, it's, I have a hard time with that document. It's got a lot of terms that I don't understand the references to, and I've been slowly but surely researching it and being able to decipher haven't been able to decipher the whole thing yet but there are some core principles that are pretty clear within that document the reason I want to decipher the whole thing is there are also inferences and clues that point to the solution of my hypothesis and my theory and an equation that adds up mathematically infinity what's infinite credit where does the only infinite credit exist? And I keep coming up with your heavenly estate, which is full of forgiveness in Christ. Okay, I finally said it. And everybody I've even mentioned this to kind of goes, huh? Are you the fuck are you talking about? You know, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm talking about infinity versus versus finite I'm talking about credit I'm talking about the source of some infinite credit and I can't figure out what it is and no, nothing makes sense if you can't figure out what that credit is 
So I'm kind of in a rock and a hard place, you know. I want to. <laughs> I've seen enough that's pointed me to this theory, and I've been getting pointed to it for a long time, not just recently. It's something that's. It's like that power of attorney video I did, you know. I knew about that power of attorney transfer for quite a long time before I actually realized all of the implications of it. You know. And the same thing's kind of going on here with this credit thing. I realized some time ago that the credit had to be a spiritual credit of some sort because spirit is the only infinite. So your spiritual life is the only one that is everlasting, therefore has infinite ability to pay. Your he treasure is stored in heaven. All sins are forgiven. All debts are forgiven in heaven. Alright, let's get the principles laid out in Unum Sanctum. There's a spiritual sword and there's a physical sword. The church wields the, s the, 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 church wields the spiritual sword and makes use of the physical sword. So the church wields the, phys the the spiritual sword and the church wields the physical sword. They also lay out a claim that the church, the spiritual, is superior jurisdiction to the physical. In that the physical sword operates under the jurisdiction of the spiritual sword. So at that time the Roman Empire was the was basically all, all of the known world was under the Roman Empire's dominance and So anyway, you have that structure. The, the, the church in Unum Sanctum claims that it's the superior authority on earth, that only salvation can be had through the church, the Catholic church. Um, that they are in... have power of attorney over your heavenly matters, the states. Um, there's a lot to it. Basically, they're claiming to be the intermediary between heaven and earth God's agent on earth okay and uh, let me pull up my slide here I actually have uh, have some notes they're probably already on the video I'm just I'm doing this without notes or anything I'm just talking to you but I do have a slide made up sanctum. There we are. Alright, Catholic Church is the divine agency, has jurisdiction over earthly matters, authorized heavenly representative and intervener for all living creatures. The spiritual sword is the church, the physical sword is the Roman Empire. The physical is subrogated to the spiritual jurisdiction. The church makes use of the physical sword. Six, all living creatures are under the jurisdiction of the Roman Pontiff. I'm still reading it over and over. It's written all weird and shit. Lots of things I don't understand, but if you're Catholic, maybe you should read it and help me out. With a Catholic ed education, maybe the parts I don't get, like references to an like references to an unidentified she who isn't Mary by context, so maybe the church is she. I don't know, but I bet somebody does, and a comment would be great. So anyway, I did confirm that the church is considered the she and I guess she's the mother of some sort. And it, see, that's the terminology I don't get. I, it's a lot of stuff that a lot of stuff that I've never um, heard of before in that thing. And I, I'm like, why haven't I ever heard of this before? I was raised Lutheran Catholic. I should know some of this stuff. I don't know. It's clueless, man. But so there's some kind of structure, and there's some kind of. rationalized and presumed access to represent you in heaven or something like that.
Now, what makes all of this valid is that Emperor Constantine basically donated the Roman Empire to the Church. Called Constantine's Great Donation. I have to read up on that, but I've looked into it enough to realize that Emperor Constantine put the Roman Empire under the jurisdiction of the Church as its physical sword. The Roman Empire morphed into the Holy Roman Empire, and then the Holy Roman Empire, which was named as a party of interest in the Treaty of 1783, ending the war between the United States and Great Britain, wherein the United States agreed to pay for all lands confiscated. That's a lot of money. It's not just the 18 million we owed to France, who was also, by the way, subrogated to the King of England, because the King of England in the Treaty of 1783 was also identified as the King of France. So there's a lot going on here that, you know, i got to tell you, I've heard people talk about the Treaty of 1783 before and the debt to France and, and a lot, but I've never heard any of them talking about, like, the arch treasurer of the Holy Roman Empire and the fact that we agreed to pay all parties for all lands confiscated. So there's a lot more than that $18 million debt to France involved. I don't know how much. I imagine it's quite a lot. Okay. So 19 years later or something like that, 17 years, a short time later in, in 1802, uh, the treaty was Treaty of 1783. If I said 18 something, if I said that wrong before, I apologize. I do that sometimes. The treaty was the Treaty of 1783. And in 1802, the last Holy Roman Emperor died, and supposedly the Holy Roman Emperor, Empire died out. But, like, this Unum Sanctum sting and Constantine's donation was all still in effect. So, all these jurisdictions didn't just go away. So, here's what I'm thinking. When you uh, do an acceptance, or when you write your name on a piece of paper that has a number on it, it at some point makes its way back to the Vatican Bank, and the Vatican accesses your heavenly estate to monetize it. So that's, that's Dave's unified hypothesis. It's just a hypothesis right now. It's just a theory. It's just an idea. Um, it's not verified news. But I'd just like a, I'd like to see a stream of comments from people who maybe know a little bit more about Catholicism that makes sense, like you know, one word at a time. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is Dave, verified news giving you an unverified hypothesis. Checking out. Uh, thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Um, if you want to be my friend, I accept friend invitations. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. And of course, clicking in the ad will support this channel. Have a nice day, everybody. Um, see you next time.